No worries there. We are glad you are here. Winifred, you unmuted. Were you just saying hi? <laughs> just saying hi to everybody. Ah, uh, terrific. Online. Good Not to everybody. see you. Welcome, <laughs> welcome. Uh oh, where am I? Well, you're on my screen. <laughs> oh, go back to gallery view, maybe. Remember, oh. gallery view will show you all the faces all at once. And where, where is that, honey? My my screen is blank. It says gallery. Um, are you at a small screen or a big screen? Big screen. Okay, so up at the top right hand corner, you'll see something that looks like to me a movie thingy. You know, one of those placards. Oh, and it oh says speaker God. view. Move your cursor around or hit the screen with your finger if it's an iPad. Yeah, or... Go back to launch meeting. Okay. Uh oh. That's that ain't gonna get you there though Nothing you're in it already i am lost i have to go out and come back mother. all right go, go out and come back in it's <laughs> always a come back in oh my it's God. always a fail safe that always works too oh my goodness gracious I, it's all good it's all good we are still ahead of time so we're gonna wait a couple more minutes to get everybody in we are glad you're here today and we're so thankful um, it's good to see many of your faces. It's good to see your names. Mm -hmm. I know some of you are still connecting. Claire, if, if I invite Winifred to go away, it means she can't come back. So I can't help her in this, can I? No. Winifred, you, you're- oh, I'm starting over my, oh, here I am. <laughs> All right, here you are. <laughs> Visually, mentally, and physically now. I used to uh -huh. say mentally or physically. There you go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is so great to see you. Yes, Mary Bird, Dave's tour of how to receive Eucharist was a wonderful visual of how then to come on in the doors and how to receive in rain or shine. You know, we, we, we orchestrated that rain just to make sure you knew that the cover is there, that long awaited covered ramp exists and it's such a gift and again, if you have mobility needs, um, we are excited to be able to invite you to come and receive Eucharist in your car in the newly renovated entry plaza. So you won't have to worry about going up the ramp at all, but instead there'll be a greeter there to greet you and make sure that a priest comes down to give you Eucharist. So all you do is drive into that little entry plaza, stay in your car and you'll be, we'll come to you. Um, so we are glad about that offering this afternoon, and we hope everybody might join us, those who feel called so to do. And of course, that is your own choice. Um, did everybody like seeing Eucharist again this morning? Yeah, do wonders for your soul. Well, it was a delight to be able to um, share that with you today, too. So it's 11.02, and much like our church service, we wait about two minutes before we begin the service, and this is our welcome time. We are so delighted to have you here today, and we'll continue to keep letting folks in. Um, you know, technology, it just happens. Um, today, as you heard in the announcements from Father Wallace, today is an opportunity to hear more of what can we do, what have we been doing, um, and what can we do in these uncertain times to be the light of Christ, to share with our hearts and hands and the resources we have in these very interesting times of, well, we can do this, but we can't do that. I've got to wear a mask and it's not safe for me, or maybe it is safe to do this. And the gift that we have at St. John's is we have this task force. One day you will see a photo of all of them in one place because the reality is they met once in March in the flesh. And then we've been meeting by Zoom for the rest of those gatherings. So there hasn't been an in-person gathering, but these folks on that task force, which is chaired by Skip Foster, have been working in subcommittees. They've been working hard and diligently to do the, the safest and best thing for our community, as we are the hands and heart and body of Christ outside our walls. Um, and Lori Messer, Former senior warden, former vestry member. Um, she and her husband have chaired stewardship. She's chaired the market. Um, she currently teaches at TCC. Uh, she teaches history there. She agreed to be um, the chair of the subcommittee that's called Compassion Care. 
and we actually merged two groups together, compassion care and pastoral care, which talk about how then are we caring for our own individuals pastorally, and then how then do we walk alongside those who are most easily forgotten, left out, or neglected, especially with the most need in our community. And of course, compassion means to walk alongside of in suffering. Um, and so we named that piece of how then do we assist our partner agencies that we already have really strong ties with, how do we assist them most effectively um, in mutual reciprocity, in the needs that they actually have rather than, well, we can do this here. <laughs> it's about dialogue, conversation, and prayer. And Lori Messer is going to talk a little bit more about what has been done and what is to come. So thank you, Lori. She's going to invite some other folks to share along the way, and um, I'll wrap it up too. So Lori Messer, thank you so much for saying yes to all of that so many times <laughs> over and for sharing today. You are so welcome, Abby. And I, before we get started, I want to do my own thank yous. Um, first to the Compassionate Care and a Pastoral Care Committee. We, since March, we first met once a week. Now we're meeting once every other week. And I just cannot thank this group of people enough. If we had enough time, I'd name them all. I'd also like to thank the Outreach Committee. They have liaisons with agencies that have also helped us out with this. Um, I'd also like to thank Vestry Chairs for the outreach, uh, Dennis and um, Shelby Augustiniak, who's also on the Compassionate Care Committee, but also Mary Bird Sims and Peggy Bilby, who are the Vestry Chairs for Parish Life, because they have gotten, I hope some of you have received emails saying, here's something that we can do as a small group. And so we've been trying very hard to figure out inventive ways to walk alongside and suffering with our community. And we are constricted in this world of COVID that you all know in so many ways. And at present, what our church guidelines state is that we do not have church sponsored face-to-face -face interaction when we volunteer. So that has been challenging. It's caused us to be creative and quite frankly, sometimes it's frustrating because when you see a fire, you just want to run in. And the problem is in this kind of fire, you might catch on fire as well. So we've had to really try to think of ways that we can creatively serve our community. So the first thing that I would like to do is to tell you where you can find these opportunities on our wonderful new church website. And before I share that screen with you, I do want to put maybe Claire and Caroline and Abby maybe on alert, which by the way, I wanted to thank the staff at, at St. John's as well. They're working incredibly hard alongside all of us. Um, but if I do something wrong, please correct me. Just knock, knock in there. All right. So here is the new beautiful, I've shared my screen. You should be able to see wonderful Deacon Joe there. And so if you come to the new website, the easiest way, at least in my opinion, to find out how to do something is one of two. One is you can go down. I can make it go down. Well, we won't do that way because I can't make it go down. Click on get involved and down at the bottom, you see serve. And so you'll see a description about St. John serving. And down here, when you see COVID update, boom, click about how you can virtually serve. And it's gonna have what our current focus is. And the month of September is Hunger Action Month. So let me put in a plug right now. If you're coming to Eucharist for the rest of the month of September, you're gonna see second harvest donation boxes. That's our focus for the rest of September. So please bring in canned goods as you come to receive Holy Eucharist, you'll be able to see the boxes right as you enter the Calhoun Street um, door. But if you go down, you can see all of the opportunities that we have that you can be involved and still keep within the church guidelines of restricting your face-to-face -face interaction um, to just virtually interacting. So all of those things are out there whenever you want to look at them. Another place that you can find out what's going on is if you click on news and events. 
and you go to news archives, you can see like little mini news stories about the things that we've done, but not even service related. Sometimes it, you see down here where it says the category, everything that you see outreach is, is what we've done or what we may be currently doing that there's a, an archive out there for a news story associated with it. And if I can get the main page to go down, hey, I did. See down here at the bottom of the main page? Takes you back to that page I told you about earlier where you go down and you see ways to serve. Did I do that right, guys? I didn't go back to the same in our community. Oh, maybe let's try that. Coming soon. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, that's the website as far as how you can find out what's going on in, in the website. So if you're just sitting around one day and you say, I want to do something to in the community, go to the website. You can also, and I didn't show this, there at the top is a contact um, portion of the website. If you have a particular ministry that you want to serve under or with, you can look down at all the ministries that St. John's has to offer to include several outreach ministries and you can click on who is in charge of that ministry. Thank you, Claire. Um, uh, who's in charge of that ministry and you can contact that person. For instance, I'm, I'm second harvest. And so you can contact me about what are we doing? What can we do with second harvest? So I hope that's all clear to everybody how you can find out what's going on like in real time on the church website. And we'll also have things in the chimes and on social media. But if you're just sitting at home and you don't have something you know, out there that you see and wanna know what's going on, that's how you find it. So I wanna um, show you, and I thank Mandy Schnitker. She's not here right now, but she made it look pretty and she put a lot of stuff into it. So thank you, Mandy, so much for this. But I wanted to, part of this, um, I've already explained to you, but I, I do want to go over some things that we have done and some things that are coming up. So I just went over with you guys how to find out what's going on with our community, how we're getting involved on the website. That's the, the Get Involved Serve page. That's the archives page that I showed you earlier. These are all the agencies right now that we have that are out there that we're serving in certain capacities. A lot of these agencies have Amazon wish lists or um, they're looking for some sort of particular donation. Um, so those, you just click on whatever you see. If you're interested in that agency, you can do it. John Allen has been a great leader for Grace Mission. He's our liaison for Grace Mission. And so I wanted John Allen to briefly tell us what's going on um, that you can get involved with at Grace Mission. Thanks, Laurie. Yeah, so um, during Grace Mission's closure with the pandemic, um, they've been helping out the Kearney Center, who um, just like before the pandemic is um, cooking up hundreds of meals per day, but now they don't have their volunteer labor to help cook. Plus, they are also distributing those to the homeless who are sheltered in hotels and apartments around Tallahassee. So Grace Mission um, is taking a couple days per week and making and distributing those meals. Um, the staff is working really hard. Um, the way that we can help is by making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Um, so we've had a great crew. Um, I've been blown away by the generosity of St. John's parishioners, um, just dozens of people who have made PB&Js. I'll come pick them up at your house. It can be contactless. I'll text you my ETA and you can set them out. Um, so that's the best way to help. And thank you so much to all who um, have helped already. Um, I'll post a link if you are interested in signing up for to make some peanut butter and jellies. And if you don't like links, you're welcome to text me, call me, uh, send me smoke signals, whatever you want, if you want. So contact me if you're interested. Thanks, John. And he's done a wonderful job. Um, this has been a big undertaking, but people have just come out of the woodworks to help and it's been great. Um, so we also have um, Big Ben Hospice, as a matter of fact, a plug for Big Ben Hospice uh, with the men's adult Bible study. 
Um, they did Hands of Insure this summer, led by the great Dennis Howard. Um, they supplied, I think, 30 cases of Insure Dentist. Correct me, please. I saw you that you're here, um, but I believe it was 30 cases of Insure they gathered and gave to Big Ben Hospice. Um, you can make masks. You can donate masks with the Tallahassee Community Health, and you see the website there. TMH is still looking for masks that you can donate. This Shared Grace Tally is a website that you can link to on our website. And once every other week, Mother Abby, myself, and uh, Dr. Laura Brock meet with this group of interfaith leaders along with agency leaders, and they talk about the, the, the things that they need. So there's additional information on the Shared Grace Tallahassee. So other than just the church website, you can also get a link to the Shared Grace Tally site and find out some more things that are going on in the greater faith community. So it's another great resource if you wanna get involved with the community and still stay you know, safe in this time. So I'm gonna hand this part of the, uh, um, the talk over to Susan Walton. We had several things when we started meeting at the end of March, we're looking around, finding things that we can do virtually. And so now we're trying to settle down in this stage of community compassion to where it's a more organized, more focused community-wide um, endeavors. And so the first community-wide endeavor that we had as a congregation was this summer. So I want Susan Walton, who's the head of the Riley Mentor Program, who's just done a wonderful job adapting to pandemics, uh, with Riley, I want to hand this over to her for a little bit to talk about what's been going on. And Susan, I know you're out there, so talk about this slide if you would, and then when it's time to talk about the school supply, just let me know and I'll click and you will have a picture for that. So at this point, I'm handing it over to Susan Walton. Susan. <laughs> Susan, you have to go off mute. If you think you're talking, we cannot yet hear you. I didn't realize you muted me. Can you hear me now? Now you can yeah. hear it. We can hear you. I'll you're on. You now. All right, you're probably going to be sorry. Um, we started the program, as you know, about five or six years ago as a mentoring program. And in 2019 and starting this year, we had 13 mentors in six schools and 10 volunteers, mostly in Riley, but in other schools as well. And so when you did that wonderful school supply drive for Riley, it gave everyone that was not able to mentor this year and all those volunteers that are not allowed to go into school a way to feel as if they were serving. And so Lori, when you talk about your school supply and you didn't want me to say too much about how wonderful you are. So, but that really provided a great need for all of them and we put out the word to all the current and past mentors because you never leave my list and they all responded that they were so impressed with the way that was run and all were so happy to be included. Um, the picture you see uh, is we customarily do a breakfast to begin Riley's school year and Fran does her wonderful, you know, breakfast that's huge and we have decorations. Well, this year with COVID-19, the principal said we would like Cicado's breakfast cups delivered. And that includes um, an egg, grits, bacon, cheese. And so we delivered um, 80 cups. You'll see the signs. We had about four or five welcome signs in St. John's. The faculty, that's the assistant principal, and she had several staff members help her unload my car. They had them all set up right behind the sign-in table where the teachers were having their temperatures taken. And that was her wish for this year to welcome them. So she really did the work for us. She told us what would best work in their situation. And so that, we, and I told her we would be happy to do that again when they can come together. Because of course, you know, some of them are on site and some of them are not. Uh, as I mentioned, and Lori's gonna tell you later that we were thrilled to be part of the school supply drive and Lori's always so good about being inclusive. 
um, Lori had written some letters at, for the fifth graders and Mrs. Knight really liked those. And she suggested to me that we do those, something like that for all the students, that we do letters for kindergarten first, second, third, and fourth, fifth, a little different for each one. And uh, you all may or may not know, we developed this year a leadership team with um, Rebecca Brown, Kitty Camp, Kelly, uh, Kelly Kirby, and myself. And Rebecca, because she has so many friends that are teachers, said, well, you know, this is something I'd like to do. So she developed the letters. As so many of our members do, she brought in some of her friends that are teachers, Jackie Goodson and Sarah, uh, Sarah ba is it Bauer and Sox? She yes. brought her in to help her. The, she wrote the letters, had Mrs. Uh, McKnight, Mrs. Knight approve them. And then, of course, Clear Dodd came in as just a saint to help us actually print all those letters, collate them, get them ready to be delivered. And so that was another thing that we could do for them. Um, we will have a recognition ceremony whenever the church reopened. It'll probably be in 2021. Uh, Kitty Camp and Kelly are gonna organize that. Um, Mrs. Knight's going to talk to me later this month, probably as she's really settled into their routine about some other virtual things that we can do for them. Um, we will do uh, something for teacher appreciation again in May, we always do. And again, she'll guide us in that direction. Um, we also have a representative from St. John's. We used to be on the school district school advisory committee. And I talked to the principal a lot about that. It seemed better to have a parent or a teacher. And uh, so we're on the local school advisory committee and they're going to have Zoom meetings. And I uh, will be sending out a letter this, uh, an email this week to all our mentors and volunteers about the guidelines and the fact that we won't be in the schools in person probably this first semester. Um, the other thing I just wanted to add, and, and Laurie, if you don't mind, I'm just going to just do a little plug for uh, a little blessing that came our way. Our team was determined to get the school libraries. Each classroom, first through fifth, had a classroom library. And um, our team put it in first through fifth grade and we finished the fifth grade the last week in February, right before all of these restrictions became you know, a part of our routine. So um, to us, that was really, really pretty exciting. So if there's anything else that you want to bring up, but we're, you know, we're still cooking and working with the stool, but right now trying to give them a little time to catch their breath. Susan, thank you so much. And, and Riley mentors are adjusting in this virtual world in wonderful ways led by Susan. And I did want to give you just a recap of our oh, parish-wide um, school supply drive. Um, Susan is very, um, humble in the fact that she and her group were really involved, as was the entire parish. We had the school supply yeah. drive for Riley. Um, things started arriving, I mean, the day <laughs> that it was put out there. Um, we, we ended up giving them, if you can see, let me see if I can see, in school supplies in real dollar value, our congregation donated over $8,000 worth of school supplies. Um, the Riley team delivered those school supplies um, to Riley. Um, we just, we all had masks. We just delivered them to them and then we left, but there were, there were 40 boxes of school supplies. In addition to that, some generous parishioners have donated over $1,900 in cash and Riley has requested, we have not executed it yet because the first couple of weeks of school has, have been crazy for them, but they've requested that that money be redirected to their teachers. Specifically, they're wanting right now some backpacks that are monogrammed with the Riley um, logo. And those donors have been contacted and they've been so gracious and said, of course, whatever the school needs. So this was our first parish-wide endeavor that we took on together. And if this is an indication of what this church is, can do and is doing for our community, 
I'm so excited about what's coming up next because now that we've done this one huge project and we have lots of others that you can get involved with, we do want to try to start focusing on something, you know, we feel so separated during this time and it feels good to be able to do things as a parish and achieve goals as a parish. So the next thing that I mentioned earlier in this is September is Hunger Action Month. And at the beginning of the pandemic, Second Harvest was holding back on canned food donations. Um, they were wanting monetary donations, but that has stopped. And now they're wanting canned food donations. The need is unprecedented. So we are doing the Second Harvest donation boxes at the church all during the week and on Sunday when you take Eucharist. So if you order something from Lively Cafe and you're coming to pick it up, bring some canned food with you. You can donate it at that time and we're gonna give these donations to Second Harvest of the Big Ben to be put to very, very good use. We already have, and if you've read your letter from Father Dave, we have what our focus is going to be in the month of October. Our focus in the month of October is going to be welcome home baskets that we're supplying for the Kearney Center. And you're like, welcome home baskets. These aren't baskets for clients to receive as they come back to the Kearney Center. Um, you're gonna hear from Holly Bernardo um, of the Kearney Center talk about in a very excited way, because I've talked to her about this, about the fact that many of these Carney former clients are going to be able to have permanent housing. And she is very concerned, as we all would be, that these people are going to have permanent housing and they're going to have a room with nothing in it. So we're going to have, just like we did for the Riley School Supplies, we're going to have a shopping list that's available to you. And you can shop. And the items are going to be sent to the church and they're going to be stored in a room that's locked and volunteers one at a time or are going to come in and open boxes and sort the goods. And then we're going to come in and create essentially a welcome home basket so that when these people are going to their permanent housing, they can have a welcome home basket that is from St. John's. And Holly has told me that she's going to let us know who receives these baskets. So we'll have a name and a face. And, you know, it's something that we might want to continue a relationship with. You know, these are our, our people who have a new home, our neighbors. God has taught us, you know, to love your neighbor as yourself. So this may be a potential for us to have, be on a more personal level with people who have received uh, help from St. John's. So that's really all I have right now. Stay tuned, you know, as we progress through this um, for other focus things that we can do as a congregation. But in the meantime, go to the website. If there's something that you want to do and you want to do it right now and you don't want to wait for a church effort, go to the church website and you have all sorts of resources that will allow you to volunteer in the community and at the same time, um, stay safe. So I'm going to open it up for any questions that you all have. Um, I so appreciate your being a part of this today. Um, so, and I, and I thank Susan and John very much for um, talking so that I'm not, you know, just here. <laughs> thank you, Lori. So thank you. Thank so, you. Thank you. And one other thing I'll say before I quit. If you are out there, and you see something that, oh my gosh, this will be a great project. Contact me. And the only thing I, I ask is when you do it, kind of have an outline of a plan of how it can work and how it can work within our guidelines. Because we don't want to like invent the wheel. If there's a wheel already out there and you can, you can tell us, okay, here's a need and here's how it can happen while being safe. We'd love to hear that. And, um, and put it out there. So that's all I'm saying. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and thank you to all the hands that are liaising and coordinating daily, um, both with prayer, but also physically, as we support those who are in the most need in our community and those who are doing that direct service contact. As Lori said, are there any questions for Lori? 
or Lori asked. Dennis Howard. Yes, um, I am trying to make you're, this thing part a disappearing can of soup. Well done, I see it. It's magical. Did you say that we could bring something to communion today? You I'm sure sure can. Those boxes are right inside the door. You just drop it in the box and then Purell your hands and come and receive Eucharist from a priest. And there was an, a question about if you come to pick up um, takeaway from, sorry, there's my English exposure coming out. Claire, are you proud? Curbside pickup for the Lively Cafe. You can also drop off then. It will be taken inside and put in those boxes. We are doing our best to keep that as um, exposure minimized as possible and that has been approved as the best way to do that. So yes, bring your cans this afternoon, next week, or when you pick up your lunch uh, from the cafe, which of course needs to be ordered the day before to smooth the process out. Um, Caroline or, well, John through Caroline says, thank you for coordinating and supporting our outreach ministry so well, Lori. And I have a quick question. Yes, is, Leslie uh, Johnson. Uh, Second Harvest no longer taking cash donations? No, they are. They the, are? Yes. In and the, you can, oh, yeah, I misunderstood. Thank you. They're doing both and. They will receive always through their donut, donate button, not donut button, but donate button on their website. Leslie, um, September has always been a focus on um, hunger scarcity. And so they usually do their, well, and sometimes in October, it's spooky to be hungry, sort of that can drive. That way everybody can engage. Ha ha, there was the pun for you, John Allen and Dennis, are you proud? <laughs> so both and Leslie. Yes, Leslie, I think the confusion I, I put out there was at the beginning of the pandemic, they weren't accepting canned goods, but they have always accepted and still continue to accept cash donations. <clears throat> I do have um, a question, and um, it strikes me that there may be some people in the parish that want to make donations, but they don't have a way to get them to the church. And um, the cans, physical donations. Of yeah, cans. physical donations, right? And um, I know that we, um, our our uh, compassionate care group, has been very careful about trying to limit exposure of parishioners or volunteers, but I just wondered if there might be, if there might be people who want to, to give, but they don't have a way to get it there, if we could arrange to uh, have volunteers pick it up, socially distance with masks and that sort of thing to bring it into the church. So that's just a question, an open question. I don't know that we would have an answer right now, but I do sense that there are are people who want to do those kinds of things, but they also want to do the right thing as far as uh, sure. being protective. Um, Barbara Berwersi, yes, you can drop off the food donations between those hours of curbside pickup, even if you're not picking up items. So that is between 11, I think actually, Lori, we talked about these hours. Do you remember? It was nine, nine to three. three. Nine to three are the hours that would be easiest for drop off. Going back to Dennis's questions, yeah, those who may not be able to actually physically get them to the church, um, we could think about that at the outreach meeting. I'd also suggest um, whoever's bringing them food or whoever's in their sphere of neighbors, um, thinking about who might be able to will be willing in that realm also to uh, bring them on in um, and thinking in our little networks. Yeah. Mary, you are welcome for knowing what you can do to facilitate and be a part of the solution. What other questions might you have? Yes, absolutely. You can, op you can bring, off, bring over any goods. As a matter of fact, Second Harvest will tell you, if you look in your pantry and you might see something that it's expired, um, bring it on anyway, because they, they have an extended, the, the FDA, not the FDA, whatever it is, the agricultural um, committee has said, of the government has said, you know, you can accept this for consumption later than the due date. The only thing that they really ask is that you limit, you don't bring in crush boxes or crush cans, they need to be intact. And as a matter of fact, if it's possible, there are some superfoods that they need like 
peanut butter and um, canned soups and things like that. And if we can get that out to the parish to let you know um, the specific foods that they really are looking for. Any unopened and non-perishable items? Thank you, Caroline, that's right. What about baked frozen goods from Al Pesh being delivered to Carney and Tasty Pastry? Dennis Howard, um, these things are still happening. They're not church mandated, um, so they are happening. Dennis knows a lot about Tasty Pastry. I would recommend contacting him directly. Um, these, of course, as Lori mentioned before, some of those things are happening um, with our current uh, regathering plan and the precautions we have in place. We are recommending the safest possible ones, and I'm not saying that's not safe. Um, it's just within our precaution at the moment with the regathering plan, uh, it hasn't expanded to that opportunity. So Nancy, great question. Nancy and Lon, um, I'm going to connect you with Dennis Howard, which you can find his info. You guys can, you can email or chat or text. You're both in the directory and I think you guys have, have that um, capability of connecting. Great question. Any other questions in the chat? It's hard to believe we're mid-September, friends. I don't know about you, but it's it's just hard to believe and yet very real at the same time. Um, I am thankful for all your hearts and hands. And as we've mentioned, both in dropping off cans this afternoon, um, all are welcome who feel safe and able to do so to come and receive Eucharist um, consecrated already. You'll um, come in, as Father Dave said, in this short little video, which will be played all through social media for life for never ending for this phase of life. Uh, but come on in, you'll have a prayer, you'll have a moment of prayer with the priest, uh, you'll receive the Eucharist, and then we will all do our best impression of Deacon Joe's dismissal as you are sent back out into the world. Thanks be to God. Um, a reminder of two other opportunities that you might want to sign up for, and all of those can be found um, on the website. Uh, the Neighborhood Eucharists, if you want to have a priest come and do a Eucharist outside where you live, it would be delightful. We have two times a week where all three of us will be going to you and doing Eucharist. We ask that you invite friends, new friends, they don't all have to be parishioners, new friends, old friends, um, folks who, who are and are an Episcopalian. Um, we ask that, you know, no more than 25 be there, um, but more than 10 would be preferable. So invite folks to come. We'll show up and do the rest, and we love to be there and gather. Again, those, are, those opportunities are on Thursday nights at 6 and Sunday mornings at 10. Look at the Sign Up Genius. Um, it's linked straight to the website. It gives you all the information you need. Um, and that will be ongoing. The second thing, which is, is the registration deadline is coming up much quicker, and that is our small group ministry, this great opportunity. Thanks, Caroline. She put the Neighborhood Eucharist direct link, and now the small group link, which is a great opportunity to be in conversation and meet someone new and just be with folks you do know already from St. John's. We often say from the pulpit that, um, Sunday mornings are not the only time for church. And we're feeling that acutely as we're not in our favorite pew in our space. And we are being the church outside our walls. We are being the body of Christ. Yet we still are connected in that common time of prayer, in conversation, in gathering in the safest way possible. So those small groups are getting ready to launch. It'll be a, all you're committing to is friendship, faithful friendship and gathering once a month. Um, we have some dynamite small group leaders who are excited to welcome you into that conversation and listen deeply to your story. And it's such a wonderful opportunity for you to meet somebody new and go, gosh, I never would have met you otherwise. And I can't wait to in person um, do that fully. Any questions about small groups or neighborhood Eucharists? I 
I'm so grateful for all of your leadership, for all of your smiling faces today. Um, a reminder that on Wednesday, we will have our second forum on the Enneagram. Father Wallace is guiding us through that wonderful tool for not just learning about your own tendencies, both in stress and personality, in health, but also how other people work in different ways and how best you can partner and understand each other and um, limit your own projections, perhaps, of thinking everyone works like you do and not falling into that own pitfall that I might be guilty of um, often. He did a great job last week. It's okay if you missed last week's forum. Jump on in and join us at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock um, this Wednesday night. Um, and next week, I can give you one more glimmer, one more housekeeping advertisement. Next week, we are going to have Episcopal 101, led by your clergy. Scripture, tradition, reason. What? A little refresher with three different voices. Father Dave, Father Wallace, and I will be leading that discussion and keeping you on your toes. There may be some uh, quizzes going on that you can participate in. Um, David Wheeler, I don't know. Is the answer to was the first Enneagram session recorded? Claire, do you have an answer? Uh, it was not. I uh, sorry, David. It was not recorded. And we do keep all our neighbors and friends in our prayers as tropical storm, soon to be Hurricane Sally, um, heads further into the Gulf. Thank you for that reminder, Dennis. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Be to God. Thanks be God. Bye guys. Oh, I like the heart that popped up. Go Peggy Bealby with the emoticon going on. Super awesome. All thank right, you. shut us down, Claire. Goodbye, y'all. Lori, thank you. Great job. Thanks, Bye, Winnie Fred. Bye, Mother Abby. Bye. All right, Claire. <laughs>